What's going on, everyone? So Victor Wimanyama is already an incredibly impressive talent. Uh, San Antonio is set up for the foreseeable future, and this is a guy that, I mean, he could be standing on the top of the mountain numerous times over the course of his career. But one of the big things San Antonio needs badly is a real playmaker. Somebody that can put Victor Wimbanyama in the proper spots, in the proper positions, recognize when he has established advantages, how established position, right? One of the big concerns that you saw uh, was that there were countless times where Victor was on the court, had a position, had a mismatch, had an advantage, whatever the case was, and guys would just completely look off of him. I mean, there were sequences where it was like he wasn't even on the court on the offensive side of things. And it's like, he's your best player. You got to get him the basketball, right? And you also want somebody that can make things as easy as possible for Victor Wembanyama. Now, luckily, Victor and San Antonio Spurs, they don't need to sort of rush things. Now, there is always the idea of like, hey, Victor's so good already out the jump. Do you kind of try to expedite things and go build like a, a, a contending or potential contending roster? Now, San Antonio has a ton of picks, ton of cap space, right? They are very well established for whatever direction they want to go, whether they want to go kind of the expedited route or the, hey, let's be patient, build over the next, you know, three to five years and let's go build the dynasty. Plus, you got to trust San Antonio. I mean, San Antonio is an organization that, you know, they know how to win. Right? They've been a dynasty. They're, they're a team that is hungry and and pop is only getting older. Right. So you gotta imagine that they're going to they're not gonna want to take too long, right? But you can afford to be a little patient with Victor and the San Antonio Spurs in general. So them trying to find that playmaker gives them several options, right? Obviously, they could go and trade for somebody, you know, DeJounte Maria, Trey Young has been uh, linked to them. Uh, they could go the draft route where they go and, you know, maybe they draft a uh, Topic or they go draft, you know, any of these young up and coming uh, point guards. Uh, that could always be a possibility. That could always be a route that they go. Uh, you know, uh, Darius Garland is somebody that kind of would make sense because of his age. He's young, right? Like, so he, you'd have him for the foreseeable future. But another option that's being thrown around and is supposedly, based on reports, being heavily considered is the idea of adding in Chris Paul. Now, question would be for Chris Paul, is, is that something he wants to do? Because chances are, you know, San Antonio isn't winning a championship next season, right? Now, if they go and get you know, a Donovan Mitchell and go trade for a Lori Markin in, or they just go crazy, then maybe you never know. But more likely than not, this would be a move for the patient route, right? You bring in a experienced veteran guard that can help mentor and build whichever young guard you're bringing in or bringing up. And maybe you even go the, the draft route of like, maybe you get like a castle, right? draft him, bring in Chris Paul to kind of just put things together, you know, maybe take a flyer on, on a young point guard or something that maybe you can grow and develop, have Chris Paul kind of mentor on, right? Chris Paul would be more of like a stopgap than he would be like the future of the franchise, right? But I also don't hate that idea, right? Bring an adult in the room, bring a, bring a competitor in the room, bring a high IQ guy. Just to me, this would make more sense if Chris Paul is open for it, which means you're probably going to have to pay Chris Paul a bag, right? Because if you're giving Chris Paul a vet minimum, why would he want to go to San Antonio when he could go to another team? Like another team that's been thrown out is the Lakers, right? That, hey, it, which makes a lot of sense, right? Lakers are probably going to need another playmaker because they're going to make some trades because they're in win now mode. Uh, he's has a friendship and relationship with LeBron James. Uh, it's always kind of been something with the Lakers, right? So, it makes a lot of sense for him to go do something like that if he has, uh, if it's, he's looking at a vet minimum. But if San Antonio's like, hey, we'll give you 15 million or we'll give you 20 million, right? Then I could see Chris Paul going like, hey, let me go get this bag, right? Let me go do this for a year or whatever, right? And now I know some people might look at that and go, that would be the dumbest thing ever. Why would you give Chris Paul? He's injury, bro. He's this, he's that, the other. Because again, it's a stopgap, right? You see it a lot of times with teams. It's it's the J.J. Redick rule, where you have salary, you can't really find anybody that you like with that salary, and you don't want to end up getting penalized for not using it, 
So you kind of sign a one-year placeholder, right? You, you sign, you give a guy an inflated contract that you wouldn't do otherwise. Similar situation might happen with the Lakers since we're talking about the Lakers, right? Like the Lakers might do the same thing with D'Angelo Russell, kind of give him an inflated contract for a year so they don't lose him. It happens a lot. And for San Antonio, that would make sense, right? You give Chris Paul kind of that inflated contract on a one-year deal, or maybe it's a, you know, it's a Bruce Brown type deal. Maybe you're giving them, you know, two years, 40 million, but it, second year is a team option. So that way, if you find something, you can let him go and then you can sign that new guy. But if you, if you don't, it's like, okay, we'll just carry it over. And now we got this expiring 20 million that you can use for a trade. You can use to clear some salary off your books. It gives you a lot of flexibility, right? Like again, Indiana Pacers did that with Bruce Brown and it landed him Pascal Siakam, right? And now they're in the conference finals this year, right? And so it does make a lot of sense from San Antonio from numerous perspectives. And then as far as like, you know, Chris Paul and the injury history and stuff, like that, again, you're not trying to win a championship, right? You want him more for the mentor side of things and to kind of come in and work with guys more than anything. So even if he does, let's say he does suffer an injury and he's out for a month, right? He can still, while he's re- he could still be a guy on the bench, still working with the young guys, still kind of being that mentor role. Right? You're, the expectations for Chris Paul are not these massive expectations. Also, Chris Paul and Rick Popovich, they have a bit of a relationship, right? They've always had you know a lot of respect for one another. Um, so I think that their relationship and their dynamic could help and go a long way. I think Chris Paul would you know, kind of give uh, an extension on the court from Pop. Right? And Pop is one of the guys that Chris Paul would heavily respect and heavily trust. And, you know, because there have been questions in the past of Chris Paul and relationships with certain head coaches, right? So you, you kind of need a head coach that Chris Paul d- is not going to just try to run over, or, you know, disrespect. Like Pop is one of those guys that I do think get Chris Paul to buy. And Chris Paul is, you know, he's a guy that plays that type of old school, move the basketball. He's one of the last true point guards in today's NBA. So I do think even from that perspective, even from that standpoint, it does make a lot of sense to, to kind of bring in a Chris Paul. And again, just kind of get an adult in the room, right? Like, I I just think that San Antonio, they're such a young team. They have so much potential. Victor Wimanyama has so much upside, right? You want to get him comfortable, right? And, you know, I'm not saying that he never looked comfortable last season or this season still, but, you know, but there's a difference in comfortability. It's one thing when you, you know, he's comfortable in the sense like he's figured out some things. You saw him progress as the season progressed, but it's another thing that be comfortable knowing that you have a point guard that is going to put you in the best positions and find you and get you the easiest opportunities possible, right? To where you don't have to work as hard. You don't have to do as much to to try to create when you have somebody that is able to do that. And, I mean, Chris Paul would get... Victor would probably average another 10 points a game if he had Chris Paul last year. Like, seriously. Because, again, it's just... Chris Paul's one of those guys that's always going to be looking for Victor. He's always going to be looking for his best player. And half the time, you just need to throw the ball up towards the rim. Victor's so big and long, and <laughs> like you're not gonna you're not gonna out you know out jump him for that for that lob, right? Like so, Victor, he's somebody that would greatly benefit from a guy like Chris Paul. And then again, maybe you use like I said. Maybe he's the fourth pick on you know topic, and then you you bring in a castle with the the eighth pick or whatever, and then or maybe vice versa. Maybe you go get you know a, a, another center. You know maybe get Sar, and then you go get uh, topic or castle or whomever, right? And now you got your guys, and you bring in Chris Paul to kind of be the adult, kind of be the leader on the court with the young guys. He's the guy that's getting everyone established, getting everyone comfortable, mentoring the young point guard, whomever that is. Maybe you take, like I said, maybe you take a flyer on a young guy. Um, you know, maybe you, you, whatever, right? You don't have to start Chris Paul, right? You could bring him off the bench if you wanted to, right? Like, let's say you did go trade for a Darius Garland, right? Okay, fine. Like, now you could bring Chris Paul in to, again, kind of work with Garland, help develop him more, um, you know, because people forget how good Garland was pre-Donovan um, Mitchell, right? Like, he was looking pretty nice, 
All right, so maybe you do go do something like that. You go get a garland or something, and then now you have Chris Paul to kind of come in and, again, kind of help facilitate things. Like, I like the idea of Chris Paul on the Spurs. I think it would help Victor more than anything, and I think if you're San Antonio, that's your goal. You want to make things as easy and comfortable for Victor as possible, and I think Chris Paul is one of those guys that would do that. Chris Paul is going to work with whoever's around it, and I think, you know, Chris Paul has this this – perception of being an a-hole right sometimes you need that especially with the young guys right he's a veteran he's well respected he's had you know he's had some success in the league not in the championship sense but he's you know was is looked at as one of the best point guards ever right for a large stretch of the nba he was uh the the best point guard ever right like he's a guy that i think yes he can be an a-hole but he wants to win he wants the competitive nature you know he's cut from those cloths uh, of the old ways, right? And I just think sometimes you need that with the young guys. You need somebody that is going to challenge these young players that are out here just doing whatever they want, right? And you need somebody that's going to challenge and get into your stars and not afraid to call them out, not afraid to, to, again, kind of be the a-hole, right? Sometimes you need that. Obviously, there's a fine line between just being a a blatant one and, and being a, you know, constructive one, right? But I think Chris Paul is somebody that could benefit a lot from the Spurs financially, but the Spurs could, I think it'd be worth the investment. Um, you know, but again, it, it ultimately boils down to like, what does Chris Paul want, right? Does he does he look at it at this point in this stage of his career of like, you know what, I need to, I need to go and try to position myself the best as possible to go get a championship because he is 39, all right, he just turned 39 in uh, May 6th. So does he look at it as like, I need to go and, you know, do my absolute best to, to go win a championship? Or does he look at it as like, no, nah, let me let me just go get this bag, right? Let's get this bag. So anyway, again, as always, this is a discussion. Past question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, do you like the idea of, Chris Paul coming to the Spurs, do you not? Uh, again, how you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Let me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.